Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Sharon C. Jenkins, the master communicator. And uh, I'm just loving you guys. I'm checking out this technology. Uh, I don't see my guest. Lisa, where art thou? Uh oh. We're about to try to find you somewhere. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. I love it. I love it. Okay. That means it's back here. Let's change the view. Make a gallery. Okay. I think I think we're gonna work now, Lisa. You ready? There I am. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. This is Sharon C. Jenkins, the master communicator. And it is my distinct privilege to start off this wonderful month of love interviewing romance writers. I am allowing myself to be totally, totally indulged in this genre. Why? Baby, love changes everything. And so I have been given the privilege um, of speaking with 14, well, really, it's about 16 romance writers, and some of them have romance in their books, and others are romance writers, but the reason why I wanted to do this is because that song in my head keeps saying what the world needs now is love. Okay, so I'm going to give you some love. And I'm going to give you love from some experts. They not only live it, they write about it. So today I have the beautiful, vivacious Lisa Huey. And she is just a fabulous girl. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about her because this whole 30 minutes is about her and what she does. We are throwing a party in celebration of her diligence and her love for the written word and her love for reading and readers. So it's your party, Lisa. What you going to do with it? (laughs) Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon, so much for having me. Um, So I write romance. I've been writing romance for a really long time, but I've been published about 11 years. I write mostly romantic suspense. So there's a little bit of um, danger, fun stuff like that in my books, but I also write a little bit of contemporary romance and uh, a teeny tiny bit of, of paranormal, but mostly romantic suspense. That's my that's my um my true love, if you will. And um yeah, so I'm that, just here. That's who you are and that's what you do. Define love for me. Oh gosh. Well, you know, obviously romance books are typically between a man and a woman, or a woman and a woman or a man and a man or multiples. That isn't quite what I write, but it, no shame there. Um, but I think the thing that's amazing about love, this way I'm not, I, I'm not a, like super keen on Valentine's day because I do think that there's so many different kinds of love. You have love for your friends, you have love for your children, for your parents, for your neighbors, and it's all different. Um, the thing that I do think is kind of amazing though is that I just think that love is the the strongest emotion in the world it trumps everything else right everything else greed hate everything so um it's part of the reason I like to write romance because how could you not celebrate like the best thing that there is ever I agree wholeheartedly. So let's talk a little bit about your journey. You could have written in any genre, but you chose this one. Tell me why. 
Well, when I was a kid, I started reading my mom's uh, Harlequins. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm showing my age there. Um, and I loved them. And then I went away to college and um, sort of eschewed romance and read a lot of thrillers and darker things. Um, and then I, um, after I started having kids, well, actually I started writing when I was pregnant with my son. I was taking the train into San Francisco. I lived in um, the Bay Area. And um, I started, I just started writing. I was like, this is, you know, the train's boring. I'm just going to start writing. And um, I've actually tried to write other genres. Like I tried to write a thriller and it turned into a thriller about a woman who fell in love. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I finally figured out I should just forget about trying to write other stuff and focus on what makes me happy. So you are bent in that genre. You are bent to write about love. And uh, I, I like the... Uh, very idea of romantic suspense. I mean, it just fits so well in the world that we live in because people are finding themselves in unusual situations. Life never is going to be normal for anybody. So how do you find love in the midst of that? And will your books point people to a pathway Oh gosh, maybe I like to think that um, one of the things that I definitely write about is people who come from different backgrounds who end up together. And I do like to think that um, I'm profiling healthy relationships and to look beyond like surface, like look beyond what you assume about the other person, right? Which, um, you know, can go for anything, not just romance, but I definitely like to do that. Cause I agree with you. Like the thing nowadays is the world's so chaotic, right? Um, one of my favorite things to do right now is I subscribe to the New York times and, uh, they have like a little section about people who just got married, right. And how they met. And it's, it, the stories are so fun. Like they're even frequently, even crazier than the things that I write about. Like, you know, like the, truth is stranger than fiction thing really is true so um yeah yeah I love it I love it uh I'm sitting here thinking I'll have to pick up one of your books you've got me intrigued I of course I read your bio I went to your website all these wonderful books I saw the fact that you like to mix it up that was huge for me. I was like, go girl, go girl. So, <laughs> what about you? What's your love story? <laughs> my love story. Okay. Well, I met my husband in college, but um, we did have kind of a, a cute thing because um, we had mutual friends. So um, I'm trying to think I met him my junior year, but we had mutual friends in common for two years. So we would go to parties and my girlfriend would say, oh, you have to meet my, my friend. I think you guys would really like each other. And we would miss. So we, so he would be at a party and I would get there and he would have just left or vice versa. Um, and I knew friends of his as well. So we had sort of like this weird um, thing where we, they literally kept trying to introduce us and it didn't work. And I firmly believe that the reason that we didn't meet until we were juniors is if we had met when we were younger, it, it might have been nothing. Whereas we were like in a better place. I mean, we still didn't get married for another three years after college. So we dated for a long time, five years. I think that's long. Um, but yes, that's how I met my husband. And um, we've survived three kids. Um, we've lived in four places, five places. We've moved a few times. We, we started in Chicago, moved to Minneapolis, um, went back to Chicago, moved to San Francisco, and now live north of Boston. So um, yeah, yeah, that's me. I mean, I think that's the other thing. Uh, you know, I, I do think sometimes, you know, romances are a little too smooth sailing, right? Everybody's relationship has ups and downs. And I like to try and make sure that I have some of that in my books, right? It's not all, it's not all perfection, right? I love that. I love that. That's life. Yeah, yeah. Life. So 
how does your writing influence your real life, your real love story? How does your writing influence? Does it make your life juicier? Does <laughs> it, it, or is your husband intrigued even more so? Because you have a huge imagination. Talk to us about that. Well, I would say probably doesn't. I mean, this is, I think that there, I honestly think there are two kinds of writers. There are writers who write to uh, explore their own issues. And then there are writers who write to explore other people's issues. And um, I tend towards trying to look at other people's issues and imagine like if I were in this situation, obviously my background influences my characters. You just can't get away from that no matter how much research you do. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I like to think about, well, if this person was in this situation and they're you know falling in love with this other person, how would I, how would I respond to that? Or how would they respond to it? Like I said, I do think my own background has to influence my thoughts on that. Right. But I like to think that, um, if somebody who is reading my book is not in a relationship that they can think about possibilities when they're dating somebody or meeting somebody. And then I also like to think if you've been in a relationship, especially for a long time, that it reminds you of why you fell in love with your partner, Versus, you know, I mean, like when your your other significant other like leaves their underwear on the bathroom floor or something, you know, you got to go back and remember why you fell in love with that person so that you don't kill them. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so but I would say that's it. I'm curious. You've been doing this for about eleven years. Am I correct? I've been writing for about 20, publishing for about 11. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what advice do you have for a brand new spanking novelist who's wet behind the ears and, you know, they just trying to navigate this world called publishing, maybe even, you've seen a lot of evolution a lot in the publishing industry so you are a great person to lend advice to a new novelist let's talk about that okay so the one thing i would say um trust your instinct when you're writing not that you can't take advice especially like uh for plot and things like that but trust your instinct and let your voice come through so don't, I, I remember when I first started writing, I, um, I was trying to be very like perfect in terms of, of like sentence structure and things like that. And I was so focused on getting all that stuff right that I, you, I lost my voice so that obviously I have a book under my bed, you know, is what they used to say, um, that will never see the light of day. And it was, it was, I made all the mistakes. So I don't, you need to like listen and learn about craft. But when you're writing, trust your instincts, trust like if you think a scene is really good, even though maybe it doesn't completely follow all the rules, trust your instincts and leave it that way. And then if 20 people tell you this, this isn't right, you've got to fix it, then maybe you've got an issue. But I think the one thing that a lot of people do is they edit their voice out. They're trying so hard to be perfect and right that they lose what makes them them. And, and they lose writing the book that only they can write. So I'm curious. <clears throat> and I'm, I, I have a reason for asking that question. I've written 27 books mm -hmm. and they were all nonfiction or inspirational. And so I, I gained the courage to write a novella. Oh, and you. I'm still nervous about it. I don't mind telling you. I'm still nervous. It's on Amazon, the whole nine yards. But I, I love love so much. I think that we, if it's still in our hearts, if you know, and I'm not a young chicken, uh, so well, if it, either. <laughs> if it's still in our hearts then we have an obligation to put our pen to paper and share the songs of our hearts with, with others because they make people happy. I'm sure your books would make me happy. I'm going to read one. I, I, take my word for it. I will tell uh, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Of but um, one of the things that I love 
about a person giving themselves permission and the liberty to write what's in their heart is the fact that you are confident in the fact that even if it only touches one person, it's going to touch somebody. So how do you keep yourself on fire? How do you keep your passion alive? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you just take your pen up in your hand and say, I'm doing this. I got something to say, and it's going to change somebody's life. How do you do that? So um, I will say that it is super important to, um, if you've ever read um, Julia Cameron, fill your well, right? So you can't just sit in your office or, you know, wherever, your car, on the train, um, and write. I think that you have to go out and experience things. Um, And the thing that's fun about uh, being a writer is that like I technically have had about 20 different professions because I go out and I research and I find out new things that'll be interesting that will make my work stronger. And it also makes you more excited about it, right? Mm-hmm. I think, uh, um, maybe that's not for everybody, but I know that um, when I'm doing research and I find like some little detail that I know is gonna turn the plot or be important to the character, that it gets me excited. That's that's the fun piece of it. Because parts of writing are not, you know, it's not easy and it can be hard sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think the, the biggest thing is to refill your well. You have to um, keep having experiences, even if it's just, you know, watching a Netflix documentary, right? You just, you need to continue to take in all that information so that you can write a story that's going to excite you. Because if it excites you, you know, it's going to excite your readers. So one of the things I'm really curious about is you are you have a foothold in the marketplace. What is your advice for authors who are seeking to establish a foothold in the marketplace? I know in our current day society, we want things like this. Yeah. We don't want to roll up our sleeves, get our hands dirty. We don't want to get on our knees and make something happen. So I'm curious, talk to me a little bit about process. So I do think that um, the only thing that you can count on is that it's going to keep changing, right? Like you were talking about, I I started writing, um, I was a member of Romance Writers of America back in the day. I think I joined in boy, 1995, 1994, 95. Um, And back then, you know, it was all like the only way you could get published was if you got an agent and you sold to New York, um, you know, and the the gatekeepers there. And then indie publishing came along and all of a sudden there was this huge explosion. But now that's changed again because you've got audio and translations. And so I think... um, I mean, it's not easy. Like I do think there are people who put out one book and they're superstars, but that's pretty rare. And usually those people have written a bunch of other things before they put that book out. You know, they're not brand new writers. I mean, it does happen, but um, start a newsletter, right? If that's like, if you're a new writer and, and I'm, I still struggle with like, oh, well, I don't, I'm not releasing anything right now. Do they really want to hear from me? And I've listened to all these experts who say, yes, they want to hear from you. So I've started trying to be a little bit more regular and just send them content, but send them interesting things, right? Like talk about your life, relate it to your books if you can. But I'm also a big fan of, um, you know, sharing whatever you're comfortable with. You know, I send pictures of my cats or the, I live near the water now, so I'll send a, you know, a picture of the sunset or whatever, but just um, cultivate that relationship with your readers, because that long-term, that's what's going to grow your business. And I mean, I think that's the other piece that's a little bit hard is that you can't, well, you can, it's very difficult to just be a creator. You have to be a creator and a business person as an indie published author. Now there are um, traditionally published authors, although they are also in positions now where they're, it's really necessary for them to do 
um, social media or, you know, they aren't necessarily like buying ads or anything, but they are doing things to promote their brand, right. And to promote themselves. Um, just listen, I would say, just listen. The only other thing I would say is like, if, if something really, if, if it makes you uncomfortable, then don't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've pushed myself a few times where I, I thought, oh, this, I, I'm just going to do this because people say it's what you're supposed to do. And I think that unfortunately that, that feeling comes through when you're doing that kind of stuff, right? If you can stay authentic to who you are and still connect with readers, that's your, your best bet for continuing to grow your business. So I'm sure because you've been in the industry for a while that there are readers that just love you, that your relationship with them that you've established over time has made, uh, how can I say it, endeared them to you. So when you put a book out, they're like, oh, don't even care what the price is. Ah, <laughs> buy now, buy, buy, buy now on Amazon or wherever. And I believe that that is a form of love. Yeah. Yeah, that is a form of love. Um, I don't believe that we need to, um, how can I say it? We don't need to be manipulative. No, or, yes. Yeah, yeah, we don't We don't need to lie. We don't need to, you know, um, in, how can I say it? Uh, anyway. So I'm a big fan of, of being authentic in a way that is comfortable for you. I will say like when my kids were younger, um, uh, especially like when my daughter was in high school, you know, I, I really, I kept my personal life very separate from my writer life because I had teenagers. I didn't, and you know, the internet's, internet's crazy, right? You can find people. So I was very careful to keep them separate. Um, and still, and still try and be authentic, right? I mean, I think that's the thing. Um, I know there are people who are not, but that is, that is not me. I, um, yeah, I don't like that at all. So, um, yeah, I, and I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. That's, that's not my jam. I mean, I think there are people out there who think it's okay to do that, but that is, that is not me at all. Yeah. I found that being authentic is the best it you feel good in your skin and people recognize your authenticity and it just established a stronger bond with that individual so we're talking about romance we're talking about the month of love we're talking about the fact that you write about love is there anything else that you want to talk about that you love to do oh. Oh, that's what I want to do. Well, I, I will say like one of the things that I like to do in my work is um, this is another thing it's important to me. So I almost all of my books, uh, I have at least one of my characters, I highlight a philanthropy that they're involved with. And it may be very small, like it may just be a few lines, but I always feel like that's that's a way you you get to understand a character, like what's what's important enough to them that they volunteer their time, right? Or um, or their money, but mostly it's time. Um, and I I love that. Like I just think it's it's important. It's important. It's important to me. So, um, and then travel. I like to travel, so I try and have books set in different places. Um, I haven't gone everywhere that I've set a book, but um, if I can, I like to set a book someplace that I've been. So, which is fun. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. So, okay. What are you going to do on Valentine's Day? You can tell us. <laughs> well, uh, sadly, my husband has a work thing, so he's going to be gone. Uh, but I'm going to go with him, which is nice. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah. I probably won't see him except for in the morning to say good morning love you happy valentine's day and then he'll be gone all day but we're gonna go which will be nice and spend like a we're gonna bookend so we'll have a day before his trip his business pieces and then the day after oh very good very good yeah you got to keep that romance alive girl yeah and i know people like to say valentine's day but i'm a bigger fan of um showing love and appreciation all the time, not just on a single day. Not that you shouldn't make a big deal out of it, but 
Um, you know, my husband brings me flowers all the time just because I would much rather have that than have one giant grand gesture on Valentine's Day. So, I, um, but for some people, they want the grand gesture. <laughs> they don't care about the flowers. <laughs> they just want some big gesture, which is fine, right? That's the other thing. You have to find a partner who's who does things that make you happy, right? Mm -hmm. Not, you know, like I'm not a jewelry person, right? So like I have friends who they love to get jewelry from their husband. I could care less. I don't want jewelry. <laughs> Flowers. Yes. I love it. Out to dinner. Let's go on a walk. But yeah, no, I don't care about jewelry. So. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it. Okay. We have a few minutes left. And is there anything that you would like to say to our listening audience and viewing audience? Because uh, for our replayers, this will be on YouTube and also it'll be on my podcast. Why? Because I'm spreading all the love I can. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, what do I want to say? I don't know. Gosh just read romance. I don't care what kind, just read romance. It makes you happy. And if you're happy, the world is happy, right? I do really believe in like a collective consciousness and that if more people read romance, the world would be a happier place. I agree wholeheartedly. So if our viewers or listeners want to reach out to you, become one of your fans, maybe even interview you or <laughs> have you come and speak, uh, how can they contact you? So um, you can contact me through my website, it's Lisa at LisaHuey.com. Um, yeah. And I, um, I will answer emails. I answer my own. So. Take and I love your website. Go, um, yeah, I'm, I'm around. I love your website, by the way. It is sensational, Thank and you. I love that picture of you, the whole nine yards, thumbs up, and then some. Well, I want to say, as your new friend, I love you, and there oh, ain't nothing you. you can do about it. <laughs> And I love you 365 days a year. Not just on Valentine's Day. There you go. No, 365 days a year. And even when there's an extra day in February, I love you on that day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you very much for joining us today. Lisa, we appreciate you and we look forward to reading more about romantic adventures that you just come up with in your heart and in your head. And we want to say happy Valentine's Day to you. Happy Valentine's to you too. Thank you so much, Sharon. It was really enjoyable. I appreciate I, it. I had fun too. This is the most fun I've had all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Well, everyone, it's time to say goodbye. Remember, this is 14 days of literary love, and I am celebrating modern day romance writers, and I'll make an announcement in the morning about who's going to be in the love seat tomorrow. All right. Have a great day, and thanks again, Lisa. God bless. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> Take care.